sistema. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty Lord. God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who delight in innocence and restore it, direct the hearts of your servants to yourself, that caught up in the fire of your spirit, we may be found steadfast in faith and effective in works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but he stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. More tortuous than all else is the human heart, beyond remedy. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, alone prove the mind and test the, the heart to reward everyone according to his ways. 
according to the merit of his deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. But the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Please stand. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, when Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great custom is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They are Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither they will, will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. May naging nakilala at naging kaibigan, sabi niya, Father, nagigilty po ako, na konsensya ako sapagkat namatay yung aking husband na COVID na hindi ako kasama. Siya rin ay nagka-positive sa COVID na quarantine Kaya yung kanyang asawa na matay, sabi niya, hindi ko nahawakan ng kamay, hindi ko naalagaan, hindi ko nakita. Father, lagi guilty ako. Wala akong nagawa. Mga kapatid, pagkatapos basahin ang ating banghelyo, sigurado ako, merong isang taong guilty dito sa ating nabasa. Guilty yung mayaman. 
sa maraming dahilan, maraming rason. Una, guilty siya sapagkat wala siyang ginawa. Hindi sinabing masama siya. Wala siyang masamang ginawa. Hindi siya korap, hindi sinabi. Hindi sinabing siya nagnakaw. Hindi sinabing inapin niya si Lazarus. Sinipa-sipa. Wala siyang masamang ginawa. Pero wala rin siyang ginawang mabuti. When someone has the capacity or the power to do something or to help others, and yet he failed to do it, he is more guilty. Sa buhay kaya natin, kailan kaya yung meron tayong kakayahan na tumulong pero wala tayong ginawa? May humingi, may umutang, maliit na bagay lang. Konting pagtingin, konting pagpansin, hindi natin binigay. Baka matulad tayo dito sa mayaman sa Ibanghelyo. Guilty on the first count. Ikalawa, ang kanyang kasalanan, hindi niya ibinahagi ang kanyang saya. He did not share his joy. Sabi sa, sa Ibanghelyo, he feasted every day. Imagine, araw-araw kumakain, masarap na pagkain. He did not share his food, his drinks, his resources. Hindi ba minsan ganun din tayo? Bakit ko isi-share, mabagi yung aking kasiyahan? Naghirap pa sila? Ako'y nagtrabaho. Ako'y nagkapera. Ako'y umaman. Ako'y nag-abroad. Anong pakiko sa kanila? Sinosolo natin ang saya. Sinosolo natin ang kaligayahan. Hindi ba mas masaya sa buhay kapag ka maraming kasama sa iyong saya? Kaya kayong iba, pag nagbe-birthday, malayo pa, nang iimbita na. Hindi ba weird? Magbe-birthday ka, yung anak mo umasa, may trabaho maganda, ikinasal, tapos kayo-kayo lang. Maraming ganyan. Sino solo ang blessing? Baka tayo rin, guilty on the second count. Pangatlo, hindi napansin ng may-ari si Lazarus. Sabi sa ating Ibanghelyo, the poor man was lying at his door. Just imagine, hindi niya napansin. Hindi nakita. Siguro nga, minsan sa buhay natin, yung mga tao na lagi natin nakikita sa daan, na mamalimos, nakahiga sa lansangan, walang damit na maayos, gutom, hindi natin pinapansin. Hindi natin nakikita. Minsan nga, invisible na. Hindi ba nakakalungkot? Kompleto tayo sa mata. Hindi natin nakikita. Para bang si Lazarus, dito sa Ibanghelyo, sa ating buhay, bahagi lang na ng fixtures ng, ng bahay. Parang aso lang. Parang lamesa lang. Parang gamit lang. Hindi nakita ang kapwa. Baka tayo rin. Hindi natin nakikita yung kapwa taon natin na nangangailangan. Baka tayo rin guilty on the third count. At pangapat, ang hindi nagawa ng mayaman sa Ibanghelyo. He failed to see the consequences of his actions. He failed to see beyond life, beyond his life, beyond his riches. He was simply enjoying the present moment. Marami sa ating ganun din. Enjoy na enjoy. Gumawa ng kasalanan, kasamaan, kahit ano. Nakalimutan natin, lahat may hangganan. Lahat may kahinatdan. Nauubos ang araw. Minsan nauubos ang yaman. If there is one big point that the Lord Jesus would like us to realize today is that After the end of this life, we will all be judged accordingly. We'll either be punished or rewarded. There is life after death. Kaya maging maingat tayo sa mga gagawin natin. Huwag kang tayo masyadong focus sa kaligayahan na naibibigay ng buhay na ito. There is still life after death. 
Mga kaibigan, mga kapatid, pagkatapos natin basahin, kung kailan natin babasahin ang ibanghelyong ito, kung may napulot tayong punto sa homily sa araw na ito, I hope you tell ourselves, ourselves and each other, we too are guilty. Because maybe sometimes in our life, at one time or another, we are the rich man. Kaya po, may time pa. Nakakalungkot yung nangyari sa kanya na matay, hindi na nakabawi. Meron pa tayong pagkakataon. Habang may buhay, may pag-asa. Kung tayo may pagkakamali, ayusin na natin. Iwasto na natin. I-correct na natin. Share your blessings. Think and remember, there's life after death. Ayusin natin. Ngayon na. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, as we remember the special needs of the poor, we come before our God, who share these riches with everyone, by sending His Son Jesus into the world. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer, that the Church may show forth the compassion of Christ for the poor who are struggling for a more just society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are tempted to become slaves of wealth and material security may realize that spiritual poverty arises from refusing to share with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may all have the grace to show mercy and compassion, generosity and understanding to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be strengthened by the warmth of our Lord's loving presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may share in the happiness and peace of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now in silence, we offer to the Lord our other personal and communal intentions. Heavenly Father, in your love and mercy, fill us with the abundance of your generosity and help us to reach out to the less fortunate. We make our prayer through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this present sacrifice, we pray, O Lord, sanctify our observance, that what Lenten discipline outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about, through Christ, 
our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim. Indeed, only O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them, like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Oh, uh -huh. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer his other the sign of peace. Peace be. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Please kneel for the prayer for the elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together, deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord, from coercion, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord, from dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord, from bribery, craft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord, from threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord, that conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord, that the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord, that human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord, that the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord, the genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray, Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May this sacrifice, O God, 
remain active in its effects and work ever more strongly within us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. Dear devotees of Our Lady of Manawag, the summer feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on May 4, 2022, third Wednesday after Easter Sunday. The Novena Masses will be scheduled at 6 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 12 noon, and 4.30 p.m. from April 25 to May 3, 2022. Additional Mass at 3 p.m. on May 1, Sunday. We invite you to participate in this Novena Masses. If you wish to sponsor one or several Masses, you may fill out the form at the counters for Masses area and submit it with your donation where you will be provided with on an acknowledgement receipt or you may visit our website www.manawagminorbasilica.org for online pamisa all names of donors and sponsors will appear in the electronic souvenir program thank you very much for your continued support god bless you please stand Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo at pakikisa sa misang ito. Nawa sa inyong pagwibit-bit nyo ang biyaya ng Diyos at ang mga panalangin ng mahal na ina. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Prayer for the blessing of the sick. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for the blessing of religious articles in memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. May these rosaries, images, candles, oil, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.